Join us this April 2nd and 3rd for the Worship Audiovisual Experience Spring 2024 Conference and Expo happening in conjunction with the Cavlo event. Wave and Cavlo are bringing more than 50 leading manufacturers and service providers to the Gaylord Opryland in Nashville, Tennessee, showcasing the latest technologies available for your church. Wave will be providing conference education to take your production and worship to the next level by learning lighting, sound, and video techniques, as well as leadership and advanced technologies like AI usage. The conference is very affordable at just $119, includes all of the sessions, recordings, and special events as part of the Wave and Cavalo experience. The Expo Pass is always free for everybody, so make sure to bring your entire team to see all that the exhibitors have to offer. Register at wave-event.co. That's wave-event.co today. With Sermon Shots Church Specific AI, sermon highlights don't go unnoticed. Easily transform your sermons into 10 plus bite sized clips ready for social media. It doesn't stop there. Refine each clip by adding or removing video sections, give them your unique touch with colors, fonts, design edits, and create the goosebump moment with background music. Elevate your message and reach hearts locally and globally. Start today by going to sermonshots.com. From front of house to center stage, for over 25 years, Earthworks microphones have sculpted the sounds of your favorite concerts, venues, and performances. Earthworks Audio is a sponsor of the Tech Arts Podcast. We are so happy to have them on board and excited to promote the new Earthworks SR117 vocal mic and capsules. To find out more about Earthworks Audio or to get your hands on this mic, go to earthworksaudio.com. That's earthworksaudio.com. Capturing emotion with sound. earthworksaudio.com. From sold out stadiums to intimate live performance venues, Sound engineers agree on one thing for the best digital mixing consoles for live sound. The only name that matters is Digico. As the recognized worldwide standard for live audio mixing, Digico consoles are renowned for their industry leading sound quality and ease of use. Whether your application is in a church, broadcast, theater, corporate, sports, or installed sound, Digico offers compact and affordable products from the S21 all the way up to the pioneering power of the Quantum 852. Digico delivers the workflow, the feature set, and the absolute reliability that the world's biggest tours and programs have come to rely upon. If you're looking for a sound console, look to Digico for your answer. For more information on Digico, go to digico.biz. That's Digico. Dot B I Z. This is the Tech Arts Podcast, where we talk about tech, leadership, and all things that concern church audio, video, and lighting. Welcome to the Tech Arts Podcast and the Earthworks Audio Studios. My name is DL. So glad to have you joining us this week. Today, we have a power-packed episode as we continue our discussion on setting your volunteers up for success. Matt Larson and Ryan Shelton stay with us for part two of this discussion. You don't want to miss that. Today's church tech tip is a device that will change how you do audio. That is coming up in just a moment, but before we get to that, I want to thank everyone who is watching and listening to the Tech Arts Podcast. We just hit 19,000 subscribers on YouTube and we are averaging 30 to 40,000 views an episode. I am so thankful for all of your support. Speaking of support, I want to take a moment and thank Earthworks Audio, Digico, and Sermon Shots for being a routine sponsor of the Tech Arts Podcast. Thank you for all you do to help this podcast stay on the air. Let me tell you how these sponsors help. They allow us to visit churches for free and help them with their technical systems. It also allows us to come to your church and retune your audio system. We have found that a lot of churches need their systems tuned properly or just retuned. 
Digital Great Commission Ministries is now providing this service and helping a lot of churches like your church get a few more years out of their sound system by just retuning it. If you're interested in this, please feel free to contact us by sending an email to information at digitalgreatcommission.org. That's information at digitalgreatcommission.org. Or you can go to audiovideolighting.com and click on the schedule a call button. Again, that's audiovideolighting.com and click on the schedule button. Today's church tech tip comes from Digico. We're going to be talking about foyer. To help us with this discussion are the Digico boys, Matt Larson and Ryan Shelton. Matt, Ryan, welcome to the Tech Arts Podcast. Hello, David. Hello. Thanks for having us. Yeah, it's good to have you on. So first question, Matt, is foyer a part of Digico? What What is foyer? Well, foyer was a three the- theater sound designers actually during COVID actually were trying to figure something to do because they just were out of work. They developed the Fourier audio system. Digico heard about it, James Gordon, and we ended up acquiring the company about six months ago. So they are actually under the Digico umbrella, but they're part of the whole Audiotonics team. And it's a product that works great with Digico, but pretty much any other manufacturer's system as well. So Ryan, how do you pronounce this thing? Is it foyer or foyer? I always say if you're if you're French, it's foyer, and uh, if you're everybody else, just just foyer. Yep. So if you live in the good old U.S. of A, it's yeah. foyer. Yeah, and down yeah. south with me, we say it differently as well. So. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I don't know anything about this product. So, Ryan, tell me a little bit, like, how does it work? What does it do? Like, dive into it a little bit. Help me understand what what it is. Absolutely. So, um, some people love plugins, like, absolutely love them. Some people don't. But probably most of us, plugins are part of our everyday mixing lives. So, whether that's in post, whether that's in live. And then with live, we've always had you know, fair kind of limitations on how to do that. And there needs to be very powerful hardware to be able to do low latency, which is obviously essential for live. And what Fourier does is it has server grade hardware. So not consumer, but server grade hardware. And it allows you to run any VST3 plugin you want to. And the joke here would obviously be even if it doesn't make sense. Um, so if you had something like isotope or you had something that is just thousands of milliseconds, so multiple seconds, you know, it would still run that now, whether it would make sense to actually do it, that would be a whole nother topic entirely. But what this means is you're no longer, no longer constrained by just one manufacturer. So, you know, if you love universal audio plugins, you can use their spark series. If you love waves plugins, you can run waves VST threes. If you love some of these more boutique brands, like um, Distressor is a huge one in our industry. Everybody loves that. And being able to have that and run that live on any platform is is just an amazing power. So whatever console you're on, as long as it supports Dante, some way, shape or form, you'll be able to use it. How does it get into the, like, how does it interface with the Digico console? Is it limited to just Digico? I mean, how, how does it no. how does it connect? It's a really simple system. It's very well built. The hardware, the software, everything's great about it. You just plug a Dante connection into the desk. So I could insert it on any input anywhere down the, the food chain of that channel strip, as well as any augs, group, matrix, wherever you want to patch it. So it will allow you to do 64 sends, 64 returns, just with a simple Dante connection. And like Ryan brought up, it's a client server-based system. So what's great about that is you just plug a computer into it. You're not having to host the software for it. You're not having to host all the plugins on it. It's basically just it's like an advanced version of a KVM switch, if you will. Yeah. You're just tapping into that box. Yep. But then what we're also doing is we're sending video at 60 frames per second to your laptop. So what's nice is you can be up and running. You could have multiple computers. So you as the band engineer could be working on your certain plugins on specific channels. A system engineer could actually be working on some matrix stuff at the same time. And anytime you could unplug those computers and the system still works. So if you're using like a touring application, you could load it out before you know, tear it down before the last song happens. So you could start thinking about your loadout or if your computer just failed. So it doesn't have to be a massive computer for this to handle your plugins. And then probably the strongest point of the design of it is that the plugins are sandboxed, especially when we open up Pandora's box with so many other manufacturers of plugins, we could actually have an issue with them. You know, even the best of the best still have issues every once in a while. Right. So because we sandbox the plugins, if I was to lose a plugin, it's the system's going to try to restart that actual plugin. 
If it just totally falls over, it will bypass it. But here I'm not losing my entire system. So remember, there's all these people that would actually have a macro that would kill their plugins. Uh, yeah, I'm one of those guys. Like I'm like, click, oh, I'm in trouble. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the whole key was to design something to get rid of a problem. We can still use all our Waves plugins that we love. They're a great company, as well as it just opens up the, the whole market for any plugin that we want to use in the system. Uh, in addition, I think what I think most people will also love about it is they know that if there's an issue, they're calling Digico support for it. Okay. On top of that is because it's this client-based server system, you'll be able to actually have your plugins back on the Digico screen. So now it's embedded in the Digico desk. Just keep in mind, it doesn't have to be a Digico system. You can use it with anybody else's, but with ours, you'll be able to actually solo the channel. You'll be able to see all your plugins on the screen. You'll be able to control them from the desk. So that's a really cool feature just to make a better workflow. How, how big is it? Like, what, I mean, two, two rack spaces, yeah. two rack spaces. So mm -hmm. it just slides into two rack spaces. You get all that functionality. Mm -hmm. It connects via Dante, you said? Yep. Correct. And what's nice is it's, it's pro. It's got the dual power supplies. It has MIDI in, out, and through. It has the Dante primary, secondary with control connections. And then on top of it, we actually have a little panel with thumb screws and so you unscrew that and you can push, put in your, your locks, your iLocks or USB car, um, connections. You get four of those. And then you can just put the little plate on there and close it up again. It just kind of secures it. It keeps the punters away from stealing your plugins when your rack is sitting there alone. You could still get them if they really wanted to, but they have to actually unscrew the panel. Yeah. I mean, for a church, it's amazing because, you know, you're only going to be doing this occasionally and being able to get into the back of the unit, put in your USB keys, you know, which potentially worth tens of thousands of dollars with all those, you know, authorizations on them and have it secured away and locked away and not just hanging out of the front of a unit or something like that is I think really smart. Yeah, it sounds amazing. If you guys want to find out more about the Foyer product, you can go to digico.biz and look up Foyer. It's spelled F O U R I E R or you can go to foyeraudio.com. Com. Coming up in just a few minutes, we continue our conversation with Matt and Ryan on part two of setting your volunteers up for success. If you missed part one, I highly recommend you go back and listen to it. It's episode 37, and it has some amazing insights that will help you. In part two, which is today's episode, we answer the question, which is more important, the PA or the console? We also get some insights that really help me understand leadership and how to navigate future-proofing your systems. It all starts right after these messages from our sponsors. Hang on. Join us this April 2nd and 3rd for the Worship Audiovisual Experience Spring 2024 Conference and Expo happening in conjunction with the Cavlo event. Wave and Cavlo are bringing more than 50 leading manufacturers and service providers to the Gaylord Opryland in Nashville, Tennessee, showcasing the latest technologies available for your church. Wave will be providing conference education to take your production and worship to the next level by learning lighting, sound, and video techniques, as well as leadership and advanced technologies like AI usage. The conference is very affordable at just $119, includes all of the sessions, recordings, and special events as part of the Wave and Cavalo experience. The Expo Pass is always free for everybody, so make sure to bring your entire team to see all that the exhibitors have to offer. Register at wave-event.co. That's wave-event.co today. 
With Sermon Shot's church-specific AI, sermon highlights don't go unnoticed. Easily transform your sermons into 10-plus bite-sized clips ready for social media. It doesn't stop there. Refine each clip by adding or removing video sections, give them your unique touch with colors, fonts, design edits, and create the goosebump moment with background music. Elevate your message and reach hearts locally and globally. Start today by going to sermonshots.com. Com. From front of house to center stage, for over 25 years, Earthworks microphones have sculpted the sounds of your favorite concerts, venues, and performances. Earthworks Audio is a sponsor of the Tech Arts Podcast. We are so happy to have them on board and excited to promote the new Earthworks SR117 vocal mic and capsules. Here's a testimony about this mic from a high-level engineer who has worked with a lot of amazing artists. I'm Matt Lowe. I'm an audio engineer. I've worked in some of the biggest churches in America and with some of the biggest named artists in the world. This microphone is going to blow the industry away. Every church in America needs this microphone. Every tour writer needs this microphone and every audio engineer should hear this microphone through their PA. It will amaze you. And I, I, I can't speak more highly about this microphone. To find out more about Earthworks Audio or to get your hands on this mic, go to earthworksaudio.com. That's earthworksaudio.com. Capturing emotion with sound. earthworksaudio.com. From sold out stadiums to intimate live performance venues, sound engineers agree on one thing for the best digital mixing consoles for live sound. The only name that matters is Digico. As the recognized worldwide standard for live audio mixing, Digico consoles are renowned for their industry leading sound quality and ease of use. Whether your application is in a church, broadcast, theater, corporate, sports, or installed sound, Digico offers compact and affordable products from the S21 all the way up to the pioneering power of the Quantum 852. Digico delivers the workflow, the feature set, and the absolute reliability that the world's biggest tours and programs have come to rely upon. If you're looking for a sound console, look to Digico for your answer. For more information on Digico, go to digico.biz. That's digico.biz. What's MXU? We get asked that all the time. MXU is the platform for churches to recruit, train, and retain their volunteer teams. It starts with our vast content library with discipline specific training videos. You can assign videos to team members, upload your own videos, and you can even organize them into courses for a more guided approach. You can keep track of a volunteer's watch progress and check in when they might be falling behind. And with groups, you can keep track of multiple teams and assign roles to specific users to give them the ability to manage your volunteer team. It doesn't matter if you're a team of five or 50, MXU will help you care for and stay on top of training for each volunteer. This is MXU, used to help churches recruit, train, and retain their volunteer teams. Join the community and start using MXU for free today. Our main sponsor is Digital Great Commission Ministries. Whether you need help building a team, finding the right gear, or just better understanding the church tech world, DGCM is here for you. Because they are a 501c3 donor-sponsored organization, they come to your church for free and do an assessment of your tech, visitor engagement, and online streaming. Plus, we give away free gear. Be sure to go to audiovideolighting.com and register your email today. This will sign you up for all of the free giveaways and give you first access to everything we offer for free. If you want free resources, training, or consulting, contact Digital Great Commission Ministries today by going to audiovideolighting.com. That's audiovideolighting.com. 
Welcome back to the Tech Arts Podcast. Today, we're talking about setting up volunteers for success with professional audio systems. To help us with this chat, we have in the virtual studio today, courtesy of Digico, Matt Larson and Ryan Shelton. Welcome back, guys. Hey, it's good to be back. Hello, David. Matt, Ryan, in part one of this podcast, we left everyone on a cliffhanger when I asked the question, what is more important, the console or the PA? So, Ryan, let's pick up right there with that question. What say you? Do you choose the console or do you choose the PA? So, um, obviously, I am biased, highly biased uh, to this to this point. But I will tell you, I've been I did a demo with a church and I told them that they needed to buy a PA. And they said, yes, yes, but our console is dying. And I said, I understand that. I see that. But you need a PA. Uh, and it was atrocious. It was terrible. And, you know, it, you know, they're sitting over there splitting hairs about mic prees and stuff like that. And it was one of the worst PAs I've ever heard in my entire life. Um, so it's definitely a chicken egg scenario. Of course, we're Christians, so we, we know the chicken came first. But the, um, as far as an audio system, as far as an audio system goes, you know, it, truly, I mean, you don't need to be massively unbalanced. So if you have a budget and you have to choose and both are in dire need, you may need to compromise. You may need to look and find some way of getting through um, with you know less in both worlds. Now that being said, speakers is physics, right? I mean, you know, covering a room, certain number of drivers, certain size of drivers, certain orientation, you know, that that is. You can argue about better paper and better metal from one manufacturer to the next. And there are some amazing speaker companies out there right now. In fact, vast majority sound really good right now. But um, if you have massively disproportionate systems, meaning a terrible PA, I don't think Matt or I are going to sit over here and tell you you absolutely need to buy a Digico first because, you, I mean, you're going to reap the benefits from an operational standpoint. Uh, and that may be valuable to you and that may be the choice you make. But as far as audio quality wise, as far as what Matt referenced earlier, what the people in the room are going to benefit from, you know, having massively disproportionate systems is it's a benefit to no one. Um, so now, you know, if you got a limp by for a year till you replace the PA or limp by till a year till you can get the, the console, then, you know, that is, you know, what it is, but obviously console should come first. So, you know, a way around that also though, is what's my problem, mm -hmm. you know, is it that the desk is failing that I currently have? Is it my PA is failing? Remember when we talked about walking around the room and sitting in different stuff? Have you ever powered off every single amplifier, fed some music or pink noise, and turned on each box one at a time to listen what's actually going on up in the air? Because that rig might be in a, been up there for 12 years. You may have some worn components, some things that are just destroyed maybe uh look at your wiring how is your speaker connections the, how's the patch bay there might be just some simple little fixes that you can do to fix your pa uh maybe it's that i don't have the under balcony speakers that i need maybe they've been off for three years and nobody knew that maybe your subs aren't aligned you know a yep. time aligned maybe so. Somebody else who was an employee actually changed the preset of the crossovers. Robert Scoville said this years ago when I was with Midas and EV and he did a presentation. He said, the first thing I do when I walk into a system is I, are the factory presets loaded in for this line array? You know, so somebody might have customized it. Let me just get back to a no one good spot. Find out, is that my problem? Do I have horrible mics? You can take some really cost-effective baby steps to fix a lot of things, but it really comes down to me coming in on a Saturday morning where I can blow, blow off four hours of just walking through each individual item. Uh, it's also just signal flow. You know, what's my gain structure like through the system? It could be just as simple as that. My gain structure could be set up horrible through the rig. Doesn't happen quite as much as it used to when we were younger. But it could be that that's part of their, their problem. So if you just take a little step back, find some other friends to help you, it's a little bit quicker, more efficient if you got two or three people to walk through this and just take a line-by-line -line approach to it and find out where my problems are. Um, you will find, I we, we had one 
a church where we basically, they only replaced the, the desk because they didn't have the money for the PA because wood's heavy and expensive, I guess. Um, so they replaced the desk and it was like they took a blanket off their PA. So a lot of it can be the desk. It can be the gain structure that they had set up for that session as well with whatever that desk was. Could be a bunch of analog inserted noisy stuff. So there's a few things to look at. Well, I was, I was going to say, I'll keep it really short, but to reinforce Matt's point, um, we have an amazing training guy. His name is Kyle. He's been with us for a good amount of time. And he was a contractor doing trainings for us before that. And he went to a church and they had a lot of stuff going on and they were just replaced the console. Um, and they just, you know, he was there to do the training and help them with getting deployed and set up. And, uh, he did what Matt said before, and he took everything back to zero. He just, you know, took out all the extra stuff. And just use the same multi-tracks they had, which was actually from a previous console manufacturer with not known for their quality of their mic pre's, and pushed everything up. And the music guy happened to be walking through the room when he did that. And they went, just stunned. And he goes, we were planning on buying a new PA. We, were, I mean, they were truly to the point where they had got themselves in this train of thought that the only thing to fix this solution was to invest hundreds of thousands of dollars into a high-end PA because that was their problem. And in all reality, and just came back, pulled it all back to zero, pushed up what was essential, got rid of overly complicated routing and configurations. And, you know, they felt like they had a new PA and they essentially did. Yeah, I think a word I like to use is preparation allows all things to be important. And what I mean by that is if you prepare for when you need a new console, if you prepare for when you need a new PA, if you take the time, energy, and effort, like Matt said, to go through and figure out what's failing, what's the issue, what's the problem, that preparation is going to allow all things to be important. But if you wait until, oh no, I have a channel dying or a console dying, but I need, I also need acoustics, I also need a PA, and then all of a sudden you're going to have to sacrifice in order to get yourself to where you need to be. So that's that's kind of the approach I, I, you know, lived by, Hey, we need to prepare. We just bought this brand new console in six or seven years. We better be prepared to buy a new one. So I'm four years in and I'm already putting in my capital budget. Hey, I may need a new console. I may need a new console. I've got a resell value on this one. What did you just say? My capital budget, capital budget. That's a really big thing that a lot of people don't understand or have never have dealt with it because whether I'm at a church or performing arts center, you just go into work every day. It's not until you and your guys sit down and we have to do it with even our jobs is we basically sit down. What do we need for next year, the next five years? Where are we trying to grow in our sales, or whatever? So we want to know where we're going. So I had a big theater where they basically needed a whole new system. They didn't do anything about it. And I said, well, you guys have the same problem as a lot of churches have in the world. They don't plan for it. And a pastor doesn't understand why you'd need to spend $10,000 on a mixer or $40,000 or a whole new PA or you know a whole upgrade of video and everything. So I said, what you really need to do is you need to paint that picture for them. You need to actually do a complete budget of what we think we need right now in the perfect world or some baby steps we can take. So at least he can start planning it in his fiscal budget that, hey, we know in three years we need to to replace this. Uh, we've been very fortunate. We've got some systems that have been out there for 15, 18 years that are just finally starting to get replaced. But you should be able to keep a system. You only get to go to the well every once in a while, like every 10 years. So um, as your system is older in that, it, sometimes people want to flip in that five, six years because they know they could resell that product at a great rate to a regional sound company because it's been sitting in a church. So I'll buy this at a great price point. Put it in a youth room or put it in a fellowship hall or, you know, exactly. have a plan for how your investments, you know, your capital gets moved around. And, you know, if it fails in a youth room, is that important as failing in the sanctuary? You know, can they get by with a 10 year old console in there? Yeah, that's probably, you know, we would all probably make the argument that if we're going to put a 10 year old console somewhere. Let's let's put it in the youth room or the fellowship hall or something like that. It, it also is kind of like if you have that budget planned in there, like when a heating and air conditioning system goes, that's not cheap. It could be a crane, it could be all this stuff. They will get the money because they have to have that. As an audio system starts failing, it's like, well, how bad is it really failing? You know, can't you, you know, can't you just use some other inputs or something? So kind of helping 
the uh, senior staff understand why you're asking for this. And it's not about spending the most amount of money. And the other thing that I think is important for a church is to have a relationship with a regional integrator. And the reason that's important is because you could call them up and have them walk you through that testing we talked about a few minutes ago. And then they can also be the ones to suggest, hey, look at you're in a big trouble in this area. You need to change this now. But here are some things that you could be planning for over the next couple of years. And again, it, it, it this could be a two, three thousand, five thousand, ten thousand dollar investment. It doesn't always have to be fifty or hundred thousand dollars. I would always advise have a one year, a five year, a ten year, and then a beyond plan. Um, pastors uh, they don't like even a hundred dollar curveballs. They want to know what's coming. They want to know why it's coming there. They don't, even if it's only $500, why am I buying this and why do we need it? Um, I, you know, I think with um, PAs, the reason why I always like to lean towards more of the higher end PAs, because I know churches try to get 15 to 20 years out of that. Uh, I think with consoles, um, I like to target kind of a six to 10 year range, you know? So when I'm four years or five years in, I'm telling my senior pastor, hey, we may want to start looking at newer technology. Um, we can ride this until it's broken, but here's what it's going to cost us if it were to start failing at this point, um, which which isn't every you know three or four years. You know, Obviously, you want to ride it as long as you can. But I think if you're prepared for it and you're telling your pastor what the cost could be, uh, what the new technology advances are and how they will benefit the church, uh, you're and then you have that one year, five year kind of ten year capital plan. You're more likely to be able to have uh, uh, products and, that are working and not failing on you all the time. So that's that's kind of the approach that I would take. Um, how does a how does a church go about picking which console they should buy? I kind of want to hear from both of you on this. So so Ryan, like you go first. Tell us, you know, how do I go about figuring out what I need? and what I should buy. Because Digico has a lot of products out there. Mm -hmm. All the manufacturers have a lot of products. So True. how do I go about figuring out what's right for me? Well, obviously, start with Digico. That'll that'll narrow it down dramatically. Uh, but from there, uh, it's really just comes down to how many inputs, right? I mean, that's how many inputs, how many outputs, what does your infrastructure look like? Do we need a front house only position to do everything? Do we need a front house monitors, front house broadcast? You know, what does that look like? Um, and from there, um, you know, the, the basics of how many microphones do we need live at one time are going to determine the vast majority of what model you end up with. What's your approach, Matt? Go big or go home. Go big or go home. <laughs> no, Ryan <laughs> nailed it. What I always say is, how many inputs and outputs do you currently have? The biggest next question is, are you trying to do front of house and monitors from the same position? Okay, so you'll, you'll say, oh, if I have, let's say today I have 48 inputs. Well, is that really what you want? You have 48 inputs because that's what your splitter had. That's what your snakes had. That's what that desk you bought has. What's the channel count you would like it to be? So if it's at 56 or 64, you could go to that size desk. Or you could say, hey, wait a minute, though. We, th we actually, a couple times in the year, we know we need to get in that 100 channels or so. So you could take two steps. You could say, why don't we go ahead and buy the desk with two stage racks to get that 112 inputs, even though I'm only really typically using the 64 to 72 inputs live, right? But I have that room to grow. Or I'd buy the desk that could handle that channel count and only might today buy the one rack, knowing I could buy or rent the rack whenever I need for that one occasional time. Um, the nice thing about it also is that I'm choosing is it a Maddie only system, which is kind of more if I've got a smaller little system, I might go Maddie. I may go to fiber optics because then if we decide we actually do need a monitor engineer or we do want to upgrade our broadcast system, I can simply just put buy one more surface. I don't have to buy all the additional racks. And I just put that in the fiber optic loop. So we try to say, where are you today? Do you want to have some more inputs than your current system does? Where would you want to grow if you needed to grow? And even if it, sometimes it's a, Let's talk about the best system we could ever imagine because we it'd be really cool if we could get the budget for this because a lot of times they don't even have any idea what the cost is. So we get those simple input, output counts, how many positions we have. We'll put together a quote, but what we also do is we do multiple quotes. We may say, hey, you know, in a perfect world, a quantum 3.3 would be really good for you. 
but they don't know where the pushback's going to be. It might be physical size because they want to do something else in the broadcast room. So we could actually do maybe a quantum uh, 225 versions of it or maybe a 338 at front of house, quantum 225 for monitors. So you can actually, we, we do a lot of these where we have multiple system designs and that way the end user at the church will have meetings with the, the integrator with us um, and, and the, anybody who, who cares and wants to understand what the system is, we kind of go through this and we do quotes line by line at retail pricing so they can kind of look at it and go, that costs more than we thought. What if we were to choose this other line in from this other quote? Could we intermingle some of this? Plus, you can also add things down the road with our system. So it gives you a really good flexibility and that's why we have these various models so you can kind of, is it more handles that I need? Do I need more input channels or in a bigger frame? Yep. So there's a couple of ways to skin the cat. Well, reach out to us is the other thing too, right? If you got questions, Matt's talking about, you don't know what fiber optics are. You don't know Dante or Maddie or what the benefits they may be. Reach out to us and we're, we're happy to take anybody through what it would look like in their system with the benefits and the drawbacks of each. You can do a lot with very simple consoles these days. Uh, the question is really, what do you, can you do? What do you need? And then where do you want to go? Where do you want to grow? What I really like about Digico, and uh, this may be the the secret that I'm not supposed to say out loud, but what I really like about Digico is the value that you guys bring to the console and then continue to put into the console. I don't know how many times I've bought a console with a certain channel count, and then about a year later, you guys add to my channel count. You didn't charge me anything. You didn't cost that didn't cost me any money, and all of a sudden I went from a certain amount of channel count to more. Um, that's the value that I think Digico brings to the game. They understand the audio industry. They understand the challenges, how to expand things. They put a lot of value in their consoles and add that value with their upgrades. But there has been some times where we did like the core too. There's times where we do charge for the upgrade. But the reason we did that is we'll have like say a 72 channel version that you could still buy at that price. And then we have the 96 channel version. But the great thing about that is you buy a Digico system today when we come up with that upgrade system, not only getting more ins and outs, but you're getting a bunch of other features. So it's like you bought the 2024 model, even though you've had it for three years. Correct. Where yeah. some system designs mm -hmm. are, what you buy is what you get forever and it can never expand or grow. And what we kind of do is we try to get it so it fits in the whole where the market segments are. But also we look at what competitors are doing. If somebody drops another desk, we can just go in and they're just, our engines are so powerful, we can just go in and crank them up and have more ins and more outs or more nodal processing or any, any other quantum features, which we may be doing something very soon here. Every time I talk to you, Matt, every time I talk to you, hey, we got something coming. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the Digico mantra right mm -hmm. there. <laughs> so how do we, so how do they get a hold of you? How do they get in touch with Digico? One of the easiest ways is just through the website. So on digico.biz, as you mentioned earlier, don't know why they don't have digico.com, but we can talk about that another day. Um, you're going to find a contact form, reach out. It's automatically kicks us to here in the U.S. Um, just the easiest way to get a hold of us. So if you want to find out more about Digico, go to digico.biz. They make amazing console products. Plus, they are here for the customer and they know the church market. So once again, that website is digico.biz. Matt, Ryan, thank you for coming on the Tech Arts Podcast and sharing your knowledge. Thank you, David, for what you do. It's incredible. All the work. We, we know what it takes to put this on and we really appreciate what you guys do. Yeah. Thank you, David. It's been a pleasure. Well, that wraps things up for today's episode. I can't wait to talk to you on the next Tech Arts Podcast. Until then... I'm David Leuschner signing off by wishing you a great day and praying God blesses every moment of your week. See you soon. You have been listening to the Tech Arts Podcast presented by Digital Great Commission Ministries. DGCM is a 501c3 nonprofit that was started to help churches with all things technical. Whether you need help building a team, finding the right gear, or just a better understanding of the church tech world, DGCM is here for you. Find out more about our free on-site visits, reports, and consulting by going to audiovideolighting.com. Digital Great Commission Ministries will help you run your church service like a pro. Find out more at audiovideolighting.com. Join us this April 2nd and 3rd for the Worship Audiovisual Experience Spring 2024 Conference and Expo happening in conjunction with the Cavlo event. 
Wave and Cavlo are bringing more than 50 leading manufacturers and service providers to the Gaylord Opryland in Nashville, Tennessee, showcasing the latest technologies available for your church. Wave will be providing conference education to take your production and worship to the next level by learning lighting, sound, and video techniques, as well as leadership and advanced technologies like AI usage. The conference is very affordable at just $119, includes all of the sessions, recordings, and special events as part of the Wave and Cavlo experience. The Expo Pass is always free for everybody, so make sure to bring your entire team to see all that the exhibitors have to offer. Register at wave-event.co. That's wave-event.co today. With Sermon Shot's church-specific AI, sermon highlights don't go unnoticed. Easily transform your sermons into 10-plus bite-sized clips ready for social media. It doesn't stop there. Refine each clip by adding or removing video sections, give them your unique touch with colors, fonts, design edits, and create the goosebump moment with background music. Elevate your message and reach hearts locally and globally. Start today by going to sermonshots.com. From sold out stadiums to intimate live performance venues, sound engineers agree on one thing for the best digital mixing consoles for live sound. The only name that matters is Digico. As the recognized worldwide standard for live audio mixing, Digico consoles are renowned for their industry leading sound quality and ease of use. Whether your application is in a church, broadcast, theater, corporate, sports, or installed sound, Digico offers compact and affordable products from the S21 all the way up to the pioneering power of the Quantum 852. Digico delivers the workflow, the feature set, and the absolute reliability that the world's biggest tours and programs have come to rely upon. If you're looking for a sound console, look to Digico for your answer. For more information on Digico, go to digico.biz. That's digico.biz. From front of house to center stage, for over 25 years, Earthworks microphones have sculpted the sounds of your favorite concerts, venues, and performances. Earthworks Audio is a sponsor of the Tech Arts Podcast. We are so happy to have them on board and excited to promote the new Earthworks SR117 vocal mic and capsules. To find out more about Earthworks Audio or to get your hands on this mic, go to earthworksaudio.com. That's earthworksaudio.com. Capturing emotion with sound. earthworksaudio.com.